you have been seeing all of the things that Kali Net Hunter can do and as a user of it for years let me share to you what are the reality behind it if you are using a Kali Net Hunter you should view it on the perspective of having a portable Kali Linux on your pocket even with phones that is over a decade ago, 4 cores, 2 gigahertz, 2 gigabyte RAM, those are enough for you to do most of the Kali Linux things that you usually do. If you are like me, I'm using the default settings of the Kali Linux image on a VMware, which is almost the same. Now, excluding the GUI tools aside, Whatever CLI commands you commonly use for pen testing, Nmap, Metasploit, Mimikatz, all of them are in your phone. The OTG integration is really great too. Attaching those things like the Wi-Fi adapter like this, a Proxmart 3, the HackRF, they are immediately recognized for the first time when I plug them without any additional integrations, drivers that is needed for them to work. Then you have the Android specific apps. Things like Hijacker, Walrus, RF Analyzer gives you a mobile friendly UI that you can use but still uses the CLI tools at the back abstracting you with any complexity if you are not comfortable in using CLI tools in Kali Linux. And lastly, one thing that you may overlook is that, come on, this is still an Android phone. An outdated one, but still an Android phone. You can use it like how you would use a normal phone, but more importantly, it is much more covert. If you are trying to evaluate stuff around you, someone with a laptop will look like more suspicious than someone whose eye is stuck on its phone. The journey on learning how to install Kali NetHunter on a phone takes patience. Not all phones are created equal, which can be confusing when you are starting out. An important thing to note is that Kali NetHunter is not the actual OS of your phone. It's an add-on on top of your OS, which is the first thing that you should take note. Kali NetHunter will work on either stock Chrome, Lineage OS, or a specific OS of the manufacturer, and only on a certain version. What this means is if you want to have a high success rate of installing Kali NetHunter, wipe your phone and flash those ROMs. This will be a lot of trial and error and breaking your phone. But in the end of the process, however, you will be very comfortable in flashing custom ROMs and confident on bringing back brick phones to life. Second thing that you should know is that there are different types of installation called rootless, light, and rooted. Now, technically, any Android phone with a stock ROM can install the rootless version of it, but you are very limited with the Kali CLI functionalities. Light, on the other hand, will have all of the functionalities, but without the Wi-Fi and HID attacks. And Rooted, of course, will give you the full experience of Kali NetHunter. Lastly, there is this WLAN Zero discussion, which is where the phones can do Wi-Fi attacks using their own built-in Wi-Fi chip. Officially, Galaxy S2, Nexus 5, and Nexus 6P are the supported ones. But personally, I wasn't able to make the Nexus 6P to work. I have read on other XDA forums also that OnePlus 3T, Galaxy S6 Edge, and OnePlus 7 would work also, but not enough official documentation about this which leads me to the next topic. The installation guide for it on the Kali NetHunter website 
lacks finer details and there are combinations of roams and tools that you would need in order for it to work. The closest thing of a guide that you can get that seems to work for each phone is in, in the XDA forum, which is unofficial. And you have to do a lot of back reading for it to work for the current version. After back reading the post, you will realize that the latest and greatest build, yeah, sometimes just doesn't work. And it breaks stuff in your phone. And you have to backtrack and find all versions for it that uh, the community has already made some adjustment for it to work. The apps that are available unfortunately hasn't been updated for a while. As you can see here, the latest one being the WHID injector was updated August 2022. It could have been the big feature of Kali NetHunter providing you apps with a mobile friendly UI. Imagine doing nmap, mimikatz, all of those things with a mobile friendly UI. And lastly, I would like to discuss the Kali NetHunter Pro, which can be installed on a Pine phone. And I think this is also a missed opportunity because once you realize that it is more of an Ubuntu phone rather than an Android phone, all of those Kali NetHunter apps on the App Store is something that you cannot use. And at that point with the advent of Ultra Mobile PC, you might as you might as well just get it and have the full functionality of Kali Linux. And I personally have a GPD Win 4 here. And yeah, it just looks like a bigger brother of a ESP. Now after sharing all of that, I really have high hopes with the App Store which is really frustrating to me because having a mobile friendly UI for the tools that I use in Kali Linux sounds really great and unfortunately it's really not that enticing of a project for developers in the community at the moment and yeah I'm sure that the difficult installation process also affects the user base and sadly the future of Kali NetHunter looks bleak but on the other hand if you want a mobile portable hacking device just look at the ARM version of Kali Linux which can be installed on things like the Raspberry Pi or might as well just get yourself like me an ultra mobile PC. Now, do you have the same experience or sentiment when it comes to Kali NetHunter? Please comment down below and let's discuss this further. And if you like my video, check out my other Kali NetHunter video here on Hakista TV. Till next time, my fellow Hakista.